This episode is brought to you by Hinge Consulting. If you're doing business on Amazon and you need to overcome the obscurity of that marketplace, Hinge Consulting will lay out the game plan that works best for your business. HingeConsulting.co. Success hinges on well-executed strategies. Hinge Consulting delivers on them. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Now I'm getting really excited. Okay, this is the part where I'm going to get loud. Holy crap, here we go. I like telling stories. I learn best through experiences. Everything I do is because of everything I did. Talk about having maximum impact while having a ton of fun. When you can net through that, what you do leave behind for your listener will have more impact. Wow, bring it on. It's time to take an inside look at those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome everyone to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. Today on Thrive Lad, we bring you a dynamic, engaging speaker, author, and life strategist who inspires folks to live in full expression of their truth by defining, embracing, and ultimately experiencing that truth. Thrive Lad listeners, Jim Phillips. Jim, how are you today? I am well, Lou. How are you? Very excited to be speaking with you. Um, I always love these uh, cross-the-country type conversations. They're always a lot of fun. We have a lot of great folks in common. And you also have a great message and a great way that you connect with with the, your audience, your your clients, and everybody. So I wanted our Thrive Lab community to get a feel, a little bit of your journey on how you got to focus specifically on the work that you're doing now, and we'll take it from there. That sound like a plan? That sounds great. Thank you. All right. The pond's in your court, man. Go ahead and, uh, and run with it. Okay. Wow. How did this all start for me? I'm going to go back to when I was 13 years old. And I was sitting in church with my parents. I was born and raised Christian. So I was sitting in church and fidgeting, I think, like any 13-year-old would fidget, looking around, uh, really kind of paying attention, but not paying attention. Saw the minister standing up front, and he was about to do something. But over to my left-hand side, I noticed that there were some folks that were getting ready to pass the offering basket. And I was just thinking about how uncomfortable I felt. And it wasn't about, it had nothing to do with my beliefs or anything like that. It was just, I felt uncomfortable, like something was a little bit off. And so I remember just sitting there and fidgeting and really not putting my focus on anything. And all of a sudden, up above my head to the right hand side, I heard this deep voice say, you're going to be doing this someday. Hmm. And being 13 years old, I looked up and I looked around, I looked at my parents. It doesn't, didn't appear that anybody had heard that same voice. So now I'm starting to question whether or not I heard it. And then I'm thinking, there's just no way I'm going to do this. I was just thinking about how uncomfortable this was being in this church, in this situation. It didn't feel right to me for whatever the reason. And then it was a couple of minutes later, that same voice said, you're going to be doing it differently. And I didn't really pay any attention to that from that point forward, at least conscious attention. But it was something that was certainly embedded in my mind. I didn't tell anybody about it. In fact, my parents didn't know about this experience until they read my book. And my book came out four years ago. And I'm 64 Mm -hmm. years old. So that's a long time for me to hold that in. But what I was noticing through my throughout my life from that point was that there was different situations I would find myself in that it would give me an opportunity to share with people what I'll just say was perhaps knowledge or wisdom beyond my years. There really was no reason why I should be talking to people about these particular topics or situations they found themselves in. But I paid attention to it and and didn't really think anything of it. And of course, you don't know if that's normal. You don't know if everybody else has that same experience. You're just living your life and you're not comparing yourself so much with something like that. And I certainly didn't tell anybody about what was going on. And then as I got into my 20s, I had a friend introduce me to actually was Wayne Dyer. I was given his book, The Erroneous Zones, and read that. And that opened me up a little bit more to metaphysics. And then I would find myself meeting different people that would be more into metaphysics. They would share other authors with me, other situations they were finding themselves in. And so I paid more and more attention to it. 
I was always a curious person where it comes to human performance, why some people are successful, others are not, why some seem to have more than others have. And it really wasn't a matter of judgment. It was just out of curiosity and interest in we're all living in this same world. We basically all have the same opportunities as far as what life would present to us. So why are people living lives differently? And it really just opened up to where I, through exploring more metaphysics and more authors and attending programs, really started to pay more attention to my own intuition. Now, I've been in the real estate business 42 years and still am active in the real estate business. And that has really been the the place for me to be able to really explore and experiment with who I am, what I have to offer. I did a lot of coaching in that with real estate professionals, and it put me in a position where I was always in front of large groups of people. And a lot of what I was sharing had to do with real estate, but I always had a very spiritual perspective that I would share with people. And as a result of that, I was invited to speak throughout the United States and then went into Europe and spoke in Europe and had that opportunity to share with what I believe that I was being given to share with other people, but it was also about what I was experiencing myself. And I think that's something that's important for people to understand is that what anybody is given to share with other people, first and foremost, it's for that individual to experience first. It, that's the purpose for it is for us to gain that, that knowledge and that understanding of who we are and what Jim, we're here to do. Yeah, Jim, let me, let me inter- interject here. And this is a good question. Back then when you were a teen and you were getting this calling that you, do you feel this calling was something internal or something from above? Wow. I, it's all one and the same. Okay. I think that I had the experience of it being outside myself because that's the way I was taught. That there isn't this brilliant being inside me that I could trust that I should pay any attention to, that God more or less, and I'm not saying it was God that was speaking to me, although I've had other people say that's who it was, but that I don't look at it that way. It was, a, it was a message that I was given. I do believe it was my higher self. Now, interestingly enough, when I, I take early morning walks right now, and I've come to call that time being immersed in the silence of the dawn, and it's when I'm most connected. And I'll ask questions, and I get answers almost immediately. And those questions and answers, the answers I should say, come back to me in my own voice. And I struggled with accepting that because it sounded like I was just talking to myself. But what I, what I learned and what I was told is that that voice that will speak to you is going to speak to you in the language and the terms and the voice that you're going to recognize. And what voice do we recognize more than our own? Mm-hmm. And it's just a matter of trusting in that. So to get more specific to your question, Lou, I think it was both. I think it is just that higher being that is us, that we just happen to be here in this physical body, having this physical experience. So, so I like this. And by the way, you know, I, I have learned in life that there's no such thing as woo woo-y. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's, there, there's just the world we're in and it's tapping into all these different, as you just said, metaphysical ways of thinking things or spiritualness enlightenment. There's lots of things that we do and, and different things that inspire different people. And mm-hmm. we, we've seen, you know, you get little dibs and dabs of this in regular day life. It's those that actually are able to live in the moment, appreciate it. Mm-hmm. That's really great. I want to spin this into some of your communication that you talk about because you have a unique acronym. I'm a big fan of those. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is that you are a life strategist, L.I.F.E. Mm-hmm. Share with the Thrive Loud community a little bit what this is about and how this is part of a lot of your messaging and how you connect with other individuals. Well, the, the word life is the acronym for living in full expression. And I believe that is a large part, and I'll get more specific to what I believe our purpose for being here is. But I believe we're here to live in full expression of our truth. Now, that begs the question, what is our truth? And that is for each of us to determine for ourselves. And that's why we have all these different experiences in life, to give us that opportunity to more fully experience who we are within the context of that experience or event that might be taking place. And my book is called The Key to Life, Living in Full Expression. So the idea behind it is, and the work that I do, is really helping people drill down, better yet, maybe not drill down as much as 
as break away, peel back all the pieces of them that they have believed over time, regardless of where they come from. It doesn't really matter if it was somebody else that said it or something that we've just taken on ourselves that we've adopted as a truth about ourselves. But it's about allowing those to fall away. And then what remains is your true self. And the more that those things fall away, the truer self is what we experience. And so the work that I do is helping people expand upon that truth. And it's not about what I say or what I do. It's about each person gaining that awareness or that insight for themselves about themselves. And that's the coaching that I do, the writing that I do. It's the life I ideally am living for myself because I'm not exempt from any of the things that life throws at us any more than anybody else is. We're all here for the same opportunity and the same experience. And it's really about discovering who we are. That's really powerful stuff. The coaching that you do is, is it more one-on-one or you do one-on-many uh, help explain to the Thrive Lab fans uh, a lot of how you coach and, and get your message across most effectively. Well, most of it's one-on-one and that's because it gets really personal. People, all of us, we have certain situations in life that perhaps we could say are embarrassing or are just really difficult, very painful that we don't want other people to hear or know about us. And yet one of the easiest ways for us to allow that to fall away is to share it with somebody else. And when we share it with somebody else, we realize that there are many, many other people experiencing something similar. It shows us that we're not alone in that particular experience. So it becomes easier to be brave, share it, allow it to fall away. However, I also do group coaching. And that's interesting in that whenever I've addressed a a larger group, I'll ask questions. And typically a question will be asked by one person, but it will benefit the group as a whole. And that just shows me how deeply connected we all are. We, We might think that this particular question or topic or feeling or experience is just unique to us. But then when someone opens the question or opens the door in front of a large group, we see that we all share similar experiences. Then it really opens up some very interesting dialogue amongst all the people that would be attending. And then if I need to after that, if somebody really feels the need to have the one-on-one, then we'll create a coaching relationship that would just be one-on-one and really look at that person's specific life experiences and what they desire to know, what they desire to do, how they desire to live and be during this lifetime. Jim, this is uh, something that, that look, a lot of great leaders, top performers, everyone is seeking some form of coaching to make themselves better. We, it has been more and more recognized as every coming and passing month comes in uh, to make the best of ourselves. We need to work with those that really can help do that. And that's not only um, from a mental, metaphysical and spiritual or leadership way of coaching. Mm -hmm. That's also a physical side too. people working with trainers and personal folks to get themselves to really embody their best fit. Mm -hmm. Uh, What do you do for yourself to help you work on the coaching and development that you need to develop for you personally? Well, I have coaches I work with and I have one in particular that I've worked with now for for, must be 10 or 12 years. And I actually went to her as a client to begin with because I was struggling with some things happening in my life that I really needed some clarity on. And she's really good and she's very intuitive and was able to help me see who I am, what I'm doing, uh, what I need to let go of. Really a lot of the stuff that I'm doing, but I, I think I do it a little bit differently where I do it more as a strategist, where what she was doing was more intuitively. So I, it's with her. And then I have this, this great, community, if I can use that term, of friends and other folks who are engaged in this sort of business and activity. And I rely on them quite a bit. I, we have conversations all the time. We share uh, opportunities that each of us might have that might benefit other people. We share the challenges we're having and bounce ideas and, and that sort of thing off, off each other. So in a way, that community is a coach for me, as I believe I am for them. And it's just ongoing. I, th- I think the maybe the, the the misperception is that when someone is actively engaged in their spiritual growth, I don't know how else to put that, but if someone's engaged in their spiritual growth, I think there's this misconception that that person or those people know it all and that they don't have the same challenges and difficulties in life that everybody else does. And in fact, it's kind of interesting we're having this conversation because I'm just finishing up a blog post right now 
that's entitled, no one is exempt from the vagaries of life. And it speaks specifically to that. We're all in this together. We all have whatever experiences we have that are specific to whatever our soul intended for this lifetime. And if we're open and receptive to those opportunities, challenging or wonderful, it doesn't really matter. We're going to find that we grow exponentially. We're going to find that life is much better. It's not easier, but it's much better just because of how attuned we are to what's being made available to us. But I think really having someone, whether it's as a sounding board, you can call them a coach, you can call them a mentor, you can call them a counselor, it doesn't really matter. But I think having someone or others that you can reach out to and really open your heart and soul to so that you can reveal to yourself who you truly are and in that process reveal to yourself what you're truly not. Yeah, that's it's great. That's that it's a perfect point. And and you kind of summed up a lot of, you know, I guess personally, um, I, I love to ask the the guests, you know, when you have trouble thriving, who or what you turn to uh to get yourself back on the thriving track. And I think you you did a good job of of highlighting the way that you go about doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh I, I wanted to ask this part, and that this is good along these lines of of coaching, and that is are you seeing certain trends or topics or challenges that your clients are facing um, more so, more often than other things? Are there certain areas that seems to be specific areas that your clients are struggling the most with where you're able to help them? My clientele tends to be mostly women, and I'll explain that in a second. In the age group of, let's say, 45 to 65 to 70, although I am currently coaching a 20-year-old young man, And I have coached younger people as well. But I think the reason that my clientele tends to be in that age group is I'm a baby boomer. And there's a a lot that that I and my coach, um, I and my clientele have gone through, we've experienced in life. But I also think more importantly, regardless of the life that any of these people have led, they've gotten to the point where they're really questioning whether or not they have lived or fulfilled their life's purpose. And so the question is, is this all there is to life or is there something more? And I, right. I think they reach out to me because they, they definitely know there's something more. They just don't know what it is. So the coaching really works to help them reveal that to themselves. What is it that you're trying to do that you haven't done or that you've denied yourself the experience up to this point in life? And it's not about more money and more prosperity or any of those things. It's really about, in my opinion, I'm just going to use the phrase that I use all the time, allowing that which desires to be expressed through you to be expressed. Right. I'm adding to this point, you know, one of the the key things as a coach as well that we learn is, you know, you're not trying to solve these solutions. Those answers are with your client. Mm -hmm. You're you're, the ones you're coaching are drawing them out of them. and, And the art of doing that is what makes a great coach. And I could see how your life strategy really helps people draw that out. And that's great that there's someone to go to for that because that is a growing audience. I'm, I'm kind of chuckling underneath. Uh, we've had guests on on the program recently that uh, two gentlemen in their 60s who both have changed careers and actually are fulfilling some of their passions. They actually are creating an old, a new comic strip. It's mm-hmm. called the New 60 Comic. And it was an enlightening lesson because they're just sharing what it's like to be 60 today. And a lot of the things that they're talking about are these challenges that people in that window that are at right now are trying to go through and maybe more through a lighthearted way of doing it. But mm-hmm. I think it's, it is important. It's stressing the part that there's more baby boomers out there than ever before. There's more people living in the age group before people are living longer. Mm-hmm. So to have these life strategies is a great offering and, and thank you and kudos to you. A shout out to you for being someone to help people along those lines. So I hope, I hope you're appreciating that at this stage of your life that you're able to give that back to so many people. Yeah, I am. I, I, I appreciate all the people that put their trust in me to help them get to their truth. But I, I really appreciate you bringing that up, Luke, because it is so important for people to realize that a coach doesn't give you the answers. A coach merely helps you get to the answers that you've always had within you. And once you, once you understand that and you can tap into that on a regular basis, you're going to find that all of the I don't want to use the word things, all of the experiences that you want to have in life are, are all of a sudden going to uh, emerge. They've always been there, but we've been blinded to them by the limiting beliefs we hold about what we believe is possible for us or what we believe we're capable of doing. Right. 
I want to hear Jim Phillips uh, from you stepping away from from the work that you do and all the, the the stuff that was probably takes up ninety some odd percent of your time. When you have a chance to escape, what is Jim's Phil, Jim Phillips escape? His fun activity, his mindless activity, the thing that gets him out that he he enjoys in his own personal pleasure that that maybe very few people know about. I am so immersed in this work. And I, I'm, and I'm serious. I find such great joy in this revealing to myself who I am. And I, I get most of my insights from being out in nature. So to, okay. to answer your question, it's really about being outside. It's about walking through the woods. It's about, uh, I'm in Northern Virginia. We have within probably 20 miles of my house, 75 wineries. Now that doesn't mean I go out drinking wine every day, but these places are, are gorgeous and they're quiet and they're peaceful. And the, the people that go there are just very open and receptive. And I, w- I would think the people that I would really like to hang out with. So it's really just about getting outside, experiencing what nature has to offer, experiencing different elements wherever I can. And then traveling to different places too, to have the experience of what these different places would have to offer. And then sometimes, or I'm going to say not just sometimes, but a lot of times when I'm going outside, I will either meditate and really open myself to more information or I'll, I'll take a book with me or I'll go and I'll take a, a journal and I'll write. I'll, I'll do whatever feels most appropriate for me at that particular point in time and just enjoy the experience. Jim, I'm going to ask an unfair question. If you were to choose the things that you do, you speak, you write, and you coach. If you were to choose one of those three, maybe does one have a little more inkling that you like doing more than another? Well, they all support each other. But I'm going to say the one that I enjoy the most is the speaking because it's mm. it's total engagement. And when, you've, when you have people in front of you, when you see their eyes light up, when you... When you see them really get something based on what I might have said or whoever the speaker might be, that's that's really one of the most fulfilling things that that I think that a speaker or, or in this case that I can experience because you know that for some reason and you, I don't always know what it is. I I just have touched somebody in a way that could potentially change their life from that point forward. And I can, I can give you a quick example. And this really is what has motivated me. This was probably, I'm going to say it was 10, maybe 12 years ago. I was given a presentation. There was a large audience that was there. And this was a real estate presentation. But as I said, I usually have some kind of spiritual slant to whatever it is I'm saying. And when I get finished speaking, typically people will walk up to the front and they'll have personal questions that weren't appropriate for the general audience to hear. So the same thing happened on this particular occasion, and I was speaking to this gentleman who was more to my left side, and I was answering the question he had for me. But out of my, the corner of my right eye, I saw this woman walking towards the front and didn't recognize her, but I still kept my attention on the gentleman that I was speaking with. Finished answering his question, turned to my right, and she was standing there. And she looked at me and she said, I heard you speak two years ago, and what you said saved my daughter's life. Now, wow. after she said that, something distracted me. So I looked away. When I looked back, she was gone. And I have no idea who she is. I don't know what I said. But what I realized was that none of us ever know the impact we have on other people's lives. But the best thing we can do is always putting ourselves out there, making sure that we're living in full expression of our truth. And in doing so, somehow, some way, and usually without our knowing it, we're going to be benefiting other people. Here, here, Jim. Well, well said and, uh, and, and to the point. And uh, I mean, you, you have a habit of being in places and speaking and having people disappear on you or voices come yeah, out. Yeah, I don't you. know what so that's about. <laughs> we're going to need more video cameras for you, Jim, to make sure that what's really happening is happening. Yeah. Jim, if, if you could, Jim, um, it always comes better from you. We'll have all of this in the show notes. Share with the Thrive Loud fans all the places that people can find you, learn about you, social media, websites, where your book is, all of that so that they hear it from you and they know where to get it. Okay. My website is livinginfullexpression.com. Just spelled out one word, living in full expression. My email is jim at livinginfullexpression.com. I can be reached on Facebook. It, to go to my business page there. That is also living in full expression. My Twitter page is inspired10 
or at inspired 10, the number 10. And let me see what else. The book is available on my website. It's also available through Amazon and through my publisher. And my publisher is sacredstoriesmedia.com. So it can be purchased there online. Right. I guess that, awesome. I guess that's it. You, got, you covered it all. And if, and if it's not there, we'll make sure we have it on the links on the page, which will be great okay. and easy for people to look at. So Jim Phillips, uh, standard uh, and signature Thrive Loud question, uh, your all-time favorite movie. It's so interesting that you asked me this question this morning because I was out walking this morning. It was about 5.30 and I had some random thoughts going through my mind and questions that I've been asked by, by people. And I, I try to get the answer so that I can share that information. And what immediately came to my mind this morning when I was walking, and I think this is really why you and I are having this conversation, was The Wizard of Oz. And Mm -hmm. it is one of my favorite movies, although I I don't think I could stand to watch it again because I've watched it so many times. (laughs) But what I don't know that a lot of people understand is, is that movie is a metaphor for life. All of the things that Dorothy goes through from the very beginning when the tornado hits the house and she falls asleep, she then has this experience with these extraordinary characters. There's the man behind the curtain. We hear that expression all the time. They go through the poppy field and they're drugged by the opium that would that would be a part of that poppy field. They wake up and at the very end, she's told that she's always had the way to get home, that the power has always been within her and all she has to do is click her heels three times. And that's really what life is about for all of us. We go through life, we fall asleep, we have all these extraordinary experiences or fantasies, if you will. If you think about the characters in the movie as well, the main characters already have what it is they're seeking. So that's another metaphor to say to all of us, we already have what we're seeking. It's not outside of us, it's always within us. And then at the end, it really is just a matter of waking up and realizing that we do, in fact, have all that that we need. Couldn't have uh, put a more poignant period or exclamation point to the end of this program, Jim Phillips. Uh, well said, well wrapped up. And uh, thank you again for coming on Thrive Loud. My pleasure. Thank you, Lou. And to all the Thrive Loud listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep thriving on one and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. And follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Thrive Loud. Or find us on the web at thriveloud.com.